Okay, so in case I happen to wander away from the microphone, I thought it might be fun to demonstrate actual speech recognition while we're doing it. This is my way of doing a demonstration without actually doing a demonstration. Okay, so I'm here to talk to you about democratizing speech, both technologies and experiences. And it's important to look at both of those because sometimes we'll look at the technologies, but we won't actually look at the experiences. I, I see this as a great trick because you're going to follow along. Okay, so, um, well, I could turn that on, but, but what we need to do is we need to really understand what does democratization really mean? It means a lot of different things to different people, but the dictionary says that it means to make something accessible to everyone. Well, then we need to try to understand what is something and what is everyone, because I think we get this wrong a lot of the time. We, we might also want to talk about what natural means, because that's what we're trying to build natural experiences. So let's we'll start with everyone. What does it really mean? Well, it doesn't mean all developers. And so we could be focusing on you know, getting skill developers or capsule developers or API consumer users to use our capabilities in our systems. But that's not really where we're trying to, to focus. We have to start with everyone, and that's everyone that wants to use these systems. If it's not developers, you know, it, it's really about consumers and business workers and students and adults and children and my country and your country and the whole planet. Each one of you are one of eight billion people that have an idea or a desire or a question that you want to do something with. You want some kind of action to happen. And that's what we're trying to solve here is actually getting you between that idea or problem and your solution. So let's take an example of search. When you try to do a web search today, you type some keywords in, you hit enter, what, what happens? Well, did, first of all, did you do the search or did the search engine do the search? Uh, I, that's an important question because it's the difference between are there actors and directors in this, the actor being the search engine and me being the director, or was it really that you were trying to do that search? And I think that's a fundamental difference when we think about what assistants are. We often place too much emphasis on the assistant itself and not on the empowerment of the people that are trying to get the tasks done. The system will become natural when the actors and the directors all collapse into a single user and the interface fades away, it disappears. Is it really natural to work through intermediaries? It's not, no. It's natural to act as yourself and not think about the tools and technologies that you're using. It makes you self-conscious otherwise. So if that's true, sorry, duplicate slide, it, it really is about you. And so you can see this example with tennis. I was having a conversation earlier this morning, so I took the example. When, when you play tennis, uh, I don't, uh, uh, we have a great tennis player over here, the, the racket disappears. You, it's not a racket. You are playing tennis. You are right there. If you're a soccer professional, your, key, your cleats are the things that really kick the ball with your foot, but you don't think about the cleats. The cleats are gone. But, but we think maybe a little too much about the agents themselves and what they're doing, and we need to make that fade away for the experiences to take over. So what about natural? What does that really mean? Well, it comes from the word nature, obviously. And so nature, you, you, things are natural because sometimes they're innate, like you, you just knew this when you came out, uh, but sometimes they're learned. Let's consider a non-linguistic example like opening a door. Well, you can open a car door, you can open a door to a house, you can open a movie theater door when you're exiting. Those are three very different ways of opening doors. One you twist, one you push on, one you pull a handle on. But would you consider them as being natural? Anybody? Well, they are, and they are because that's what we all know, because we've learned those things. So natural is, is a point of context in time. It's a point of what the environment has taught you, what you know. So how does that actually happen? Well, part of that is de facto standards. Those door knobs and handles and other things have been there forever. They are de facto standards. There, there might actually be some ISO standards. I don't really know. Uh, uh, they probably are, but, but they weren't that way initially. And so another way to do it is actually intentionally with standards efforts. And so the work that we're talking about here really is both the de facto aspect and the actual intentional effort of creating standards. Now those standards are both from a technical standpoint 
as well as from an experiential standpoint, and we need to remember that. The ISO standard might talk about how those doorknobs are supposed to work and tolerances and things like that, but there's an experiential aspect to it that we haven't standardized in our industry. And I'm going to talk about a couple examples of that. So first, let's look at human computing interactions. Keyboarding became natural. Who here believes that a QWERTY keyboard is anything like natural? But yet, it's the winner, right? Why? Well, it's because it was ubiquitous. It was because it was the thing everybody used. It started out because you couldn't type on a typewriter and it would jam up. And so that design turned in intentionally makes you slow at typing, but yet we all do that every day, which is awesome because that's why you should use voice because query is terrible. Uh, and so it's either innately natural or it's learned. Sometimes that happens. Uh, Language is innately natural. Voice is innately natural. Vision is innately natural. We should embrace those things and understand how humans interact and then try to replicate that in, in the actual systems that we're building. So, well, let's look at language a little. Let's look at language specifically. It, it doesn't necessarily mean complex language patterns. If I'm trying to go someplace, I'm probably not going to say, very long, complicated sentences. I'm going to say things that you all know what I'm talking about. If I walk up to a ticketing agent, I'm probably not going to say my whole life story. They're probably going to ask me a simple question, and I'm going to say, to Seattle. Right? That's all I'm going to say, and they understand from the context what's actually happening. That's based in things like Grice's maxim of quantity. You don't say too much. You don't say not enough. You say just the right amount. Now, I've got a, a quick story to tell you. One time I was in my car and I was taking my kids. I have four kids. They play soccer, not tennis. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. My model just playing tennis. But we were driving, and I had to take them to soccer practice. And I got about a mile away from the house, and I realized, because I was thinking way too much about things like this that we do, and not very much about where I was supposed to drive them. And I had to think, well, am I driving to this field, or am I driving to this other field? So I placed a call, obviously with voice, on my car to my wife, and this is what she said before I said anything. Field four. And I'm like, thanks. And, I, you know, and then I'm on my way to field four because she knew from the context that natural interaction didn't take anything from me at all other than ringing my wife up. And she knew what it meant. right? That's important to consider when we're building these assistants. What is the context that you need to have? What is the situational uh, awareness that our assistants really need to take advantage of? Okay, so let's talk about conversation. The word conversation itself is a bit interesting. Do you really want to have a conversation with your light switch? Mm, show of hands. Okay, that's, that's fine. I, I, you know, I appreciate your bravery uh, and, and, and honesty. The, the reality is, is I don't think we do for the most part. We just want to do things. We want things to happen. We don't want something to do it. We want to make it happen. We want it to be completed. I think we're leaking some of our implementation details into our experiences. We have conversations there because we don't understand the context. We have conversations there because we don't understand all of what the user is saying in their words or their meanings or their colloquialisms. And that's really important for us to get right but we don't focus on that enough. If we're going to build an open ecosystem here, these are kind of some of the challenges I believe we need to focus on. We need to uh, strive for soccer field four kind of experiences and, and not the I can say you know 27 words and you get the three words that were the most important. Also about assistance, if you look at what we're building, we often, the assistant companies and the teams that build them, they have a bunch of ideas. Those graphs were from, from Joyfish, great. You know, everybody's doing the same thing. Why aren't they doing more things than that? It's because I only play music so much. I only set so many timers. I only ask about the weather so many times a day. I only dot, dot, dot for the hundred things. When you look at the next thousand things, we're all different. And we haven't helped the users get there. We're, we have a big crutch on the developer community, and we're trying to have them build up the rest of the capabilities. But we're missing something really important, really, really important. What is that? 
Well, it's probably not just about these big leaps of capability. Like, I, you know, I want to say something and have 20, 20 things happen. I want to be able to say things and get little tiny things to happen, I think. Because, you know, uh, I, I, I want to really be able to be empowered to use voice all day long for all of the things that are important to me, for the things that voice is the best at. It's not going to be great for touching up photos, maybe. You know, I don't want to move by pixels. But I might want to tell it you know, objects and different things I want to adjust in the picture, right? We also are trapping our users inside these assistant experiences, right? You know, we've, we've got applications that do calendaring, and we've got applications that do email, and we've got applications that do social media, and then we have assistants that are trying to duplicate all of those things. You know, it's a race, and I don't think the assistants will keep up. I think that all of these capabilities in these other places are going to have more capability. They're going to be able to do more things. And so when we tack voice outside of those experiences, I think it's useful. It's very useful. But I don't think it's enough. There's an analogy I'll play here. So this morning, I, uh, actually yesterday, I flew down to California. But interestingly, the airplane didn't pick me up at my house. I, I, had, to drive to the, I had to drive to the airport, unfortunately. It was easy to do. It was 6 a.m. in the morning. But I also, I didn't get into my car when I rolled out of bed. I walked from my bed to do things, and then I eventually walked to my car, and then I drove to the airport. There are more elemental actions that we do that we're not enabling people to do. We're looking at, we're building airplanes, and we're building flight systems from major hubs in the, in the, in the world, and we're helping people fly. You only fly so much. There's all of the other transportation. What is the biggest mode of transportation used uh, by humans in time? You walk, yeah. right? What are you doing with a PC or with a phone most of the time? Well, you're not doing those 100 things that we had on the board there. Otherwise, we'd have a lot more usage in the industry. We're missing out on some of these elemental actions. When you say something to an assistant and you're trapped there, you're trapped. I like some of the things very much that Larry showed this morning. Right, he showed not just the teaching part, that was cool and I love that, but even before we get there, there were some simple things. How about scroll down, right? How many times have you said something that you're a little bit too far away from your voice experience and you're like, ah, oh, I have to walk over to this, right? Uh, well, it happens to me quite a lot and it's really frustrating and I'm lazy and I really don't want to walk over there. I really want to be able to do everything all the time, no matter what it is, and I want to be able to do the big things like fly to California but I want to be able to walk to my dresser as well. And if we focus on, I think, some of those things, we'll see an uptake everywhere because people won't feel trapped. They won't feel like it's a, a boxing experience of I can only do this thing and then, well, if I can't do all of it, why am I going to do this one thing at all, right? Um, so as an industry, I think we need to focus on the elemental. The shortcuts are really awesome. They take you very far distances, but the airplane's never going to pick me up at my house. And so democratization, what does it really mean? It really means we have to focus on the users. What do the users want to do? Big tasks, lots of big tasks, and all the little tasks. And how does it all fit together? In the context in which they are, probably more in their apps and more in the experiences. Sure, have separate experiences that are fantastic, but we're, we're sort of missing that sort of multimodal. I think a lot of people are thinking multimodal means in your assistant. I, I don't think that's what that means. I think it means in the world, wherever they are. I'm outside of my car. I'm inside of my car. I'm wearing some AR device. I've got a mobile phone. I've got, like, where I am is where I am, and that's where I want to be when I'm doing the things. So I think that's about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.